if every time you start your Dreamcast, it's asking you to re-put in the time, then your battery is likely dead. So here's how to fix that. Uh, note, you might need to do some soldering. So we flip it over and there are four screws that you want to take out. Take the modem off first. Don't use one of these, uh, although they're handy with interchangeable bits. You, uh, you can't get them that far down in for the most part. They just tend to stick because the outer shell has to be wide enough to hold the inner shell and that's not going to work. So find a solid, a solid piece. You got four screws and this is a Phillips, the four point, pretty common. Everybody's grandpa has one of these. Got two out. This is very wiggly. If you have it resting on the top. This is one of the more simple mods, but you want to be sure to have the right parts for it. Make sure you don't have a disc in there. I've done that, try to take the top off with a disc and everything's, oh, something's freaking out. It's, it's just a disc in there. All right, set the top aside. Now what you want to do is detach this ribbon cable and there's no sort of latch. It just pulls right out. And uh, you don't have to remember the orientation because these are old enough that the form will have stayed on there. What you don't want to do is what I did is uh, put a few triple A's in there. And while that will work, the Dreamcast actually outputs a bit of a charge to charge a battery. And if you don't have a chargeable battery, which these are not, you don't want to charge something that's not chargeable. It can explode, which I've not had that happen yet. But that, that can happen, then it gets a mess everywhere, it can short all sorts of stuff. You've got four screws, one, two, three, four. On uh, the controller deck, notice this is pretty floppy right here. You're gonna have to finagle this up as you pull the board up as well. See if we can do it. So you actually have to push in and pull this out as you lift up. And it's not very much, it's very slight. And there always seems to be one or two screws that aren't quite out all the way, because you think they are, and then you just stop unscrewing them. And the whole thing comes apart. So that connector connects the port to the board. Let's take these screws out and just set them down here. And one note is never ever touch anything here. Uh, it's, it's a very slight chance you'll get shocked, but I have messed with enough electronics that I have been shocked enough times and it is not fun when that happens. So with my uh, my AAA adapter that I put in here, you don't want that. This can, like I said, short that out. It also runs the power here to the fan. We can just quickly disconnect that. Don't ever pull in the cords themselves because they can come dislodged uh, from the connector itself. Always pull from the connector. As odd as that feels, you don't want to ever separate that because good luck finding one of those connectors these days. So you've got the Dreamcast controller port with uh, the battery port right here. It, uh, it actually, I wish I would have still had this now to show you guys how to detach it. It was actually uh, soldered on here, which is great because it won't fall out. Um, but over the years, something being soldered like that, when it goes bad, you either have to desolder it or just break it off and try to resolder some new points. And it's very difficult to do that in a very slim space. So I did it on the back. And the positive is this point here. 
and the return of the negative is right there. So I'm going to cut this off. Or not, I could just snap it, I guess. It was uh, not a good thing that I did. Somebody on Reddit pointed out that I should not have done that specific mod because the battery needs to be rechargeable. So I'm going to put that by the wayside. And I got five pack of these on Amazon. Now I'm going to put the battery right here and it'll just connect through right here. I don't need that second one. And this is awesome because if you close it, it will actually connect right here. A CR2032. That's what most people would think it does take, and that is not true. It is an ML2032. The same thing, but ML is rechargeable. And one way to tell, uh, for whatever reason, wherever you get them, 2032 has some sort of grit on the back, and the ML does not. It's completely smooth. No idea if that's a stylistic choice. I don't know what, why they've done that, um, but that seems to be pretty universal, and they're the same size. And same voltage, amperage, everything. So we are going to try to solder this. Oh, hopefully I breathe a lot of that in. The return goes here, and the lead will go right there. Now this is actually Radio Shack resin core solder. Which I'm pretty proud to have after Radio Shack went kaput a few months ago. I remember walking into Radio Shack as a kid and thinking it was the coolest store. Uh, I was always interested in doing this stuff as a kid. My dad wasn't. He'd just go to buy batteries and whatnot. But it, it seems like that is quite a common thing. Kids liking stuff that their parents don't seem to. And with me, it wasn't much of a rebellious thing. Is I just wanted to know how things worked. Some terrible smoke, bear with me. And that is the return point or negative, and that is the lead or positive. And you can take this ML2032, let's pop it right in. Let's pop that back into the Dreamcast. And you're gonna have to bend that down a little bit, seat that back in. As I have modded a few, well, my sure number of consoles, one thing I've always liked about the Dreamcast, apart from the system, the software, anything else, is that they always seem to have, I don't know if that's bronze or gold looking screws, but if you cross thread them anything else, with a, heaven forbid you cross thread them, the inside always appears to still be gold. So, I don't know what that means or why that's impressive, but to me, it's awesome that a, something inside a system that at the time when it was created, nobody would think to take apart unless it was at a service center. Just a tiny part like that would deteriorate well, I guess you'd say. Plug this back into the board, plug that back into the controller board, and I'm just gonna seat this in here. You can use tape or whatever else you want. Be sure to hook the fan back up. Click. We tuck that pretty much anywhere. And usually I'm pretty good with my installs. This one is very sloppy as far as where it's holding because I do not have any tape on hand. Make sure you have your four screws down. You have to actually pull this up a little bit and it will seat nicely. So let's screw that all back in. Like the video if you like the video, subscribe to see more of my ramblings, and press thumbs down if I suck. This is proving to be difficult.